unripe figs ni mji ambao ulikuwa na mizabibu habayo haikuwa imeiva but bethany you know the story of lazarus who lived in lazarus it is a house of the humble the house of the poor the house of the oppressed those who like studying the bible and looking at it critically the gospel of matthew chapter 21 verses 2 it talks about two animals it talks about a donkey and a colt inaongea kuhusu puda na mtoto wa puda the gospel that was chosen for us to read by the society for promoting christian knowledge tunasoma matthew uh, uh, mark 11 lakini hiyo inaongea tu kuhusu puda but Matthew talks about two animals a donkey and a colt is there a discrepancy no there is no discrepancy why two animals kwa wale ambao mmetebea Israel na juzi wa mama wa Dawes hii walipanga mpango wa kwenda Israel no not this year it was last year and we actually coincided with the time when your excellency you are there tulipofika pale kwa Jerusalem temple tuliambiwa ulikuwa huko <laughs> tugekutana huko now in Jerusalem mlima unaoitwa wa olives au mlima wa mzeituni uko ngabo ile na ndio uja Jerusalem unateremka alafu unapada mlima wa Jerusalem now you cannot ride a donkey or a camel ukiwa unateremka mlima common sense utaaguka itakuwa gusha so Yesu alitumia mwanapuda na akatumia puda mama na mtoto wake kwa sababu gani akiteremka chini ndio aende Jerusalem alihitaji aloa animo mnyama ambaye yuko chini kidogo ndio kusije kukawa na hatari nao akipanda mlima mtoto hageweza kupanda So kwa hivyo hapo alihitaji mama the mother donkey ndio akampadisha. Now there are lessons to learn and lessons to observe. I want to mention one or two very quickly. In verses 1 and verses 2 of this gospel that was read to us, Jesus said to the disciples he sent that when you go to that village say the Lord needs it. Bwana anahitaji. Why would the Lord have a need and yet he owns everything? Kwa nini Mungu anahitaji? He is the creator. But you see he needed a major to be born. He needed a boat to teach. He now needed a donkey to ride. He needed an upper room for his last supper. It is not that he is inadequate but he wants to teach you and to teach me a lesson. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verses 9 uh, tells us that he who was rich became poor for our sake. Aliyekuwa tajiri akakubali kuwa maskini kwa ajili yetu. Because he chose to partner with us in order to see his will worked through us alitaka mapenzi yake yafanyike katika maisha yetu when we say the lord's prayer and we have said it we say may your will be done on earth as your will is done in heaven so in 1 corinthians chapter 3 and verses 9 he calls us fellow workers with him anatuita wafanyikazi pamoja na yeye they were surprised to see him riding on a donkey this was a symbol of his humility are you ready to humble yourself and to allow him to ride in you people will probably be surprised when they see that he needs you watu watashangaa wakiona Mungu akikutumia 
Lakini ni vizuri tuwe tayari Mungu atutumie kwa ajili yoyote ile. Nitasema baadaye kidogo. And verses 3 akasema Mkiulizwa mseme yes he needs it but he will return it. Anaihitaji lakini atairudisha. So it meant that he would use the donkey but not keep it. He would return it back to the owner. This is to remind you and I that when you give to God he returns and he na- does not just return he returns with interest in the consecration of a church we do consecrate the vessels that we use for offertory aliyekuwa azilete alichelewa nikaona hatutamkojea and the words that we use are from the book of chronicles that all things come from you o lord vitu vyote ni mali ya mungu na hii tunayokuletea tunakurudishia kile kilicho chako when you give your life to god when you give your property to god for his use he will bring it back and you bring it back with an interest why Hebrews chapter 6 verses 14 he says my god will multiply he will multiply I don't know kwa Kiswahili ku multiply ni kufanya nini Eh Mheshimiwa Rando ananiambia ni ku kuogeza lakini unajua kuogeza it is to add Wale wanaoelewa Kiswahili mtafute the word multiply kwa Kiswahili ni nini Sijui kama ni kujumulisha au what it is. He also says in Philippians 4:19, "My God will supply for all your needs according to his riches in glory." We want to praise and thank God that during the, consec- the, the, the construction of this building, wa Kristo wa kanisa hili la, ba- la Bahati walioanza kwa kanisa dogo ya mabati ya watu kama mia moja, mia moja hamsini. Actually hata hawakuwa na kiwaja. Walisubuka sana. Wakapata hiki kiwaja. Na ingawa ni kuhubiri ni nahubiri governor, your excellency the governor tuna shida ya parking na hizi nyumba unajua ni zako na umezikodem. Sasa <laughs> ufikirie kama na wewe utasema kama vile Biblia inasema my god will supply ukizipeana kwa kanisa Mungu ataendelea kuogeza i will leave that with you so i am preaching <laughs> i'm preaching i'm not <laughs> so god supplies then because i want to go quickly we see in verses 8 to 10 They went shouting and singing Hosanna 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 in the highest They were quoting the psalm 118 that was read to us verses 25 Now people think the word Hosanna is a shout of celebration I know when something good is said kuna watu husema Hosanna Hosanna But you see Hosanna does not mean what you are doing by saying celebration. Hosanna in Psalm 118 verses 25 means save now. Tuokoe sasa e Bwana. Tuokoe sasa. Ukiwa katika hatari. Wakikuyu na siwaingilii badala ya kuita Mungu wengine wao wanasema woi wa boy maito woi wa jiro maito wanaita mama yao na mama yao labda alikufa ita Jesu au useme hosana save now o oh lord tuokoe sasa and the salvation they were crying for was not personal they were looking for a political messiah who would lead a revolution to overthrow the romans they were looking for salvation that would be for the nation but not for individual 
na hapa wenzangu wa Kenya ninaona hatuko tofauti na wao instead of seeking salvation in our lives Mungu abadilishe maisha yetu tutaweza kuangalia serikali ile tutaweza kuangalia serikali yetu Mungu badilisha serikali yetu Mungu fanya hivi God wants to save you and to save you now kwa wewe kupeana maisha yako Now the response of Jesus to the congregation is different it was not to impress the crowd in as much as they were shouting hosanna hosanna eh hakuwajibu because he knew in seven days wataanza kusema crucify him crucify him crucify him na ni vizuri kujifunza na wao mimi sikuja hapa kuhubiri siasa lakini mimi ninakumbuka tulipokuwa tukipata uchaguzi tulifurahia sana na tukafurahia sana na unajua serikali ikiingia niifanye kazi na serikali haina pesa inatoa pesa wapi kwetu yeah give to sisa what is sisa's and you give to god what is god's sasa serikali ikisema mlete pesa ndio tufanye kazi tena wanaanza kusema crucify them you see you are not different from the jews i'm not different from the jews ni vizuri kuona vile yesu alisema in matthew 16 verses 20 when jesus did miracles he would tell people not to say who he is alitaka watu wagudue wao wenyewe yeye ni nani But in this case at the triumphal entry we see him allowing them to say he is the messiah he is the messiah This is because he never wanted anybody to have an excuse as to why they never accepted Jesus If there is a time when we need to say hosanna lord save us it is now And if you are going to say Lord save us it should begin in the church. Bado mna mitede. Ebu inua mitede. Yes, asante. Ni wakati wa kumwambia Mungu atuokoe na aanze kutuokoa kwa kanisa. Kanisa imekuwa biashara. Yes. Mpaka juzi mmoja wetu akasema inafaa kanisa sasa ianze kulipa tax. Zamani zile kanisa kile inakusanya kwa sababu ni pati ya umati community society kinatakiwa kurudishwa kufanya kazi ya Mungu to benefit the congregation to benefit the people but not to benefit the bishop or to benefit the pastor that is how it is supposed to be Ndivyo basi tulisoma wakati Yesu alipoingia pale hekaluni alikuta biashara inafanywa huko. Hekalu lilikuwa na sehemu tatu. Sehemu ya kwanza ilikuwa ya gentles na wanyama. Na hapo ndio biashara ilikuwa inafanywa. Na biashara iliyokuwa inafanywa huko ya kuuza buzi na kodoo hawa wanyama walikuwa wa the priests. The next court ilikuwa court ya Jews na wao tu ndio waliingia huko koti ya mwisho ilikuwa ya priests na hiyo ilikuwa imefunikwa watu wasije wakaonekana tunashukuru Mungu kwamba siku hizi makanisa hayawi na ile kati iliyokuepo kwa sababu mambo yetu yanatakiwa kufanywa yakiwa dhahiri Mungu atuokoe na Mungu atusaidie after Jesus did all these things he went to Bethany Now I told you Bethany is a place of quietness it is a place of um, poverty and so on Jesus went to Bethany because he wanted to have communion with his father and as he was going there he discovered a fig tree akaona mti wa mzabibu na matawi yake yalikuwa so green so he thought he would have fruit 
Because for the figs to sprout, there must be greenery. But when he reached there, he discovered there were no fruits. What did he do? He cast the tree. Now, the fig tree is a symbol of the Jews. The fig tree is a symbol of us Christians. Nimfano wetu sisi wa Kristo. Mara nyingi sisi kama wa Kristo. Tunaweka afasado na wafis. Tunaweka guo nyingine au sura ya Kristo. Siku ya jumapili. Tunakuja, tunanyenyekea, tunainama, tunainuka. Baada ya muda kidogo tukitoka kutukienda kwa mambo yetu. Tunakuwa watu watofauti. Mahatma Gandhi alisema to Christians, I like your Christ. Nampenda Kristo wenu, but I don't like your Christianity. Nampenda Kristo lakini Ukristo wenu si upendi. Why? If only Christians lived like Christ. Heli wa Kristo wageishi kama Kristo. Lakini sisi hatuishi kama Kristo. Wakati mwingine tunaishi kama watu wa shetani. Kenya is said to be about 84 of mengi. Lakini ingia kwa jela. Ni wale wasio wa Kristo au ni wale wa Islamu au ni kina nani wako wengi? Au hamuigiagi huko kutembelea watu mimi huenda kuhubiri wa put in the randa ya jinsi tunavyo mlangoni ambapo wale watu walikuwa na bahatika walikuwa naletwa hapa bahati wanafungwa na ile kamba wanaekewa ID hapa na hapa ndio wao watu wanaishi mtukufu rais hapa bahati tuko na so many elderly people mtukufu rais na nashukuru sana kwa sababu katika ile mpango mzuri ambayo uko nayo ya health umeleta ile kitu inaitwa social health insurance fund ambayo imetoa ile malipo ya NHIF kutoka 500 mpaka 300. Tunashukuru sana mtukufu rais. Mtukufu rais pia pale katika health umeweka ile kitu inaitwa emergency chronic and critical illness fund ambayo mtu ambaye yuko na shida ya kansa, mtu ambaye yuko na shida ya heart disease, mtukufu rais hii hakuna haja ya kuuza mashamba. Mtukufu rais hii serikali yako inajali watu kama hao wanatibiwa pale katika mahospitali zetu tunajua hata madaktari umeshatengeneza kitu mzuri ya kuwarudisha katika kazini mtukufu rais tunakushukuru kwa kazi mzuri ambayo unafanya mtukufu rais kuna kitu moja ambayo mimi lazima niongee na gavana wetu ambaye yuko hapa anajua kuna manyumba hapa ambayo ni ya kaunti ambayo inashirikiwa na kaunti na yako mtukufu rais manyumba uko na project mzuri sana ya kutengenezea manyumba unajua biblia in the book of john 14 verse 1 inasema ya kwamba baba yetu He has good plans for us. He is preparing a house for us and that house has enough rooms for all of us. Mtukufu rais wakati unakuja kutengeneza hizi nyumba. Mimi naomba ambao sisi ambao tuko na card holder mkishirikiana na gavana wetu. Wale ambao wako na card holder ni nyumba 2500. Utupatia three bedroom house for free as a way of honoring the Maumau descendants ambao walikuwa hapa mtukufu rais. Sisi ukifanya hivyo mtukufu rais sisi tuna support project yako 100% mkiwa na gavana wetu mtukufu rais hapa mahali huko 1963 mwai kibaki was the president of this place mtukufu rais na mwai kibaki wewe unaenda na njia yake ya kutengeneza economy mtukufu rais angalia saa hii mafuta ilikuwa ni 250 saa hii umeshikisha iko less than 200 mtukufu rais angalia unga sasa watu wa opposition naona kitu ya kuongea unga iko 130 mtukufu rais ile kitu ambayo watu walikuwa nasema yati wanafanya biashara ya dola ilikuwa 160 sasa umeteremsha mpaka 130 mtukufu rais tunashukuru kwa kutengeneza economy yetu may god bless you for the good job you are doing mtukufu rais kuna hii area yetu mimi na governor is aware niko na nine primary schools ambazo ni za county mtukufu rais na hii area yetu hakuna secondary hata moja mtukufu rais mimi naomba ni jambo tu moja neno moja tu utatamuka katika wizara ya education na tupate a secondary school hapa Morrison Primary School mtukufu rais watoto wetu wanamaliza class 
wanaingia kwa kawash wanaingia kwa boda boda because of lack of a secondary school governor aliajiri watu wetu kazi juzi akaniambia pato enda ulete vijana ambao wamemaliza form 4 hapa kwetu watu wajamaliza form 4 because there is no secondary school mtukufu rais nena jambo moja alado na governor tengeneze eh, class moja hapa morrison secondary uh, morrison primary chukue na secondary school mtukufu rais jambo moja la mwisho nikimalizia mtukufu rais kuna soko yetu moja hapa na governor is aware ambayo inaitwa Uhuru Market it is very much known kwa ku produce uniforms za Kenya mzima uniforms za Kenya mzima zinatengenezwa hapa Uhuru Market and in 2011 mtukufu rais Uhuru Market ilichomeka kuna block moja inaitwa block E ilichomeka mtukufu rais na serikali yako kuu ilichukua hii uh, under the ministry of uh, social housing a state of uh, state of uh, department of social uh, housing ilichukua hiyo soko from 2011 13 years to now hiyo soko ijatengenezwa ilichomeka wale traders walikuwa wanafanya kazi pale sasa pale kwa mahali ambayo iko parking wametengeneza vitu zinakaa matamba ya uh, matangari matangari mtukufu rais hawana mahali ya kufanya kazi mtukufu rais mimi naomba serikali yako kuu iko na uwezo unene jambo moja tu leo hapa hiyo soko iishe mtukufu rais traders wetu waweze kufanya kazi katika hii area yetu mtukufu rais nikimalizia nataka kukuambia hivi wewe ni kama Nehemiah Nehemiah ambaye alienda ku rebuild ile fallen uh, uh, wall ambayo ilikuwa imeanguka kule Jerusalem mtukufu rais ulipata economy iko chini umeanza ku rebuild economy mtukufu rais ulipata dola iko 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 juu umeanza ku rebuild dola Thank you so much for the good job you are doing. Mimi sina mengi ya kusema lakini jambo la housing na education mtukufu rais barikiwa sana. Thank you so much na Mungu awabariki. Asante. Asante sana MCA. <laughs> Wajua mtu akiona baba lazima alie kidogo. Nisahau mheshimiwa Mark Tosha pia kwa hapa. Pole sana. Na mheshimiwa Linda wa Commercial Chambers. Mheshimiwa Linda asante wako hapo. Na waheshimiwa wale viongozi wa wetu tunawatambua wote. Rais mimi na mama matatu kwa heshima yako kwa sababu umekuja area yetu na mimi kupea governor nafasi yake. Na fasi ya kwanza nitataka tu kuomba kwa njia unyenyekevu. Kuna nyumba za serikali watu wamepewa notice za kutoka. Mimi sipingi mradi wote wa nyumba isijengwe. Lakini ile muda wamepewa ya kutoka tu ndio ilikuwa inatatiza. So wananchi wa hapo wameambiwa toke by April 31st. Na watoto walishaingia form 1, wengine waingia form 2, washaingia mashule na washalipa makaro zao. So ningeomba tu wapewe nafasi kidogo, waongezewe muda kidogo ili waweze kutoka. Kwa sababu tayari umehakikisha kwamba nyumba lazima zijengwe na tuwezi kusema la. Nasema tu kwa heshima wapewe tu nafasi wamalize mula wao watoke ili waweze pia hao kuonekana ni binadamu sababu deadline yao ni 31st shukrani yangu ya pili ni kwa governor sakaja for the first time in Nairobi president watu wa mtaa wameandikwa kazi watu wa mtaani wameandikwa kazi hiyo ni jambo lazima tumpongeze na kwa sababu wako hapa ni vyema tuseme anafanya kazi na bado aongeze kufanya kazi Nairobi yote na msupport mia kwa mia kuona kwamba ametimiza hadi zake ya mwisho nataka kukushukuru kwa sababu nasikia MC anasema opposition opposition anasema mba tax tulisukuma tu tax sasa at least zimepungua hatungeongea haingepungua na tukua tunaongea kwa ubaya lazima tusukume rais atupunguzie sisi amepunguza sasa si makofi kwake <laughs> nataka kushukuru rais kwa kukubali kukubali kiongozi wangu wa chama changu cha ODM Raila Amolo Odinga kumuunga mkono kukuwa chairman wa AU sisi kama watu ODM tunasema asante kwa hiyo hiyo support unapatia ndugu yako Raila Amolo Odinga Kenya inahitaji kila mtu makabila inahitajiana na sisi kama wewe ndio rais wetu lazima tukunge mkono lazima tusimame na wewe Bishop amesema neno moja tukuombe umebeba Kenyans zaidi ya 50 million ni kweli ya ulali na sisi tutakuombea na kuona mahali unaweza songa tutakusongesha na support na sisi tunasema tukiona kitu mbaya tutasema rais hii ni mbaya tusaidie tubadilishe kwa hivyo hatuna problem kukuwa kwa upinzani ili tupate hapo hatuna problem sisi tunasema rais tunakupenda 
Hatuna shida na wewe na wewe ndio rais wetu na tutakunga mkono. Kwa hivyo hiyo issue ya kusupport our party leader tumesema asanti. Mungu akubariki. Na pia kwa watu wa Makadara through governor rais kuna nyumba za city council, city county ambazo tunaishi ndani. Pia nigeomba governor watu wana wasiwasi kwa hizi manyumba. Hawajui ni gani na bomolewa, ni gani inaenda. Ningetaka mclarify kwa sababu kuna wale wameishi hapa kama bahati kuna nyumba za city county government wameishi miaka mingi na hawajui kama zinaenda ama ziendi naomba uwe na mkutano na wakaji wa Kaloleni Botela Jeriko Buruburu na hapa bahati uklarify tu ndio watu wakwe kwa amani other rais tunakupenda karibu tena makadara na tunakuheshimu pengine wengine walikuwa nafikiria ladu akija hapa atakuja kupiga rais Bishop alisha niambia make sure usipige rais. <laughs> na mimi siwezi piga rais hata nikamwambia bishop hata unge niambia sina kitu ya kumpiga sasa hii. Sasa kama ameshapata kiongozi wangu support mambo gani ingine. Sio tumetosheka. So rais asante governor karibu wakati wako Mungu awabariki. Asante Asante sana mheshimiwa Ladwa our diocesan bishop Joel pamoja na viongozi wa kanisa the diocesan uh, chancellor bwana Gishira Kibara tumefanya kazi pamoja ya KPS mtukufu rais na viongozi wenzangu bwana asifiwe watu wa SK bwana asifiwe god is good all the time nimesikia tumechanganya service yenu so mnikubali mwadhani ya goswo amen gai ni mwega na edisho the nyona ina moko tu hamwe haya eh your excellency thank you for being with us today leo ni siku ya muhimu sana kwa watu wetu wa hapa kwa kanisa yetu ya SK Emmanuel na ndio maana tumekuja na viongozi wengi sana Najua hawajapata nafasi ningeomba kwanza MCAs wote wasimame ili tuone wale MCAs ambao wamekuja hapa kuna MCAs wengi sana your excellency tuwapigie makofi tuko na Dionysius MCA wa Gidurai ako hapa tuko na ndugu yangu kutoka Spring Valley Matopeni Korea ako hapa MCA pale nyuma tuko na MCA Dr. Klemo kutoka Kahawa West Tuko na Sospita kutoka Roisambu. Tuko na Murefu Irungu Mukuru kutoka e, Karioko Ziwani. Tuko na Mato Mbugwa kutoka Mutwini kule Dagoreti South. Tuko na Dorin ambaye ni special elect katika chama cha UDA. Nani yako nyuma yake Simoni? O tuko na Nancy hapo nyuma yake pia special elect katika chama chetu. Tuko na chelidi wetu hapa Didi ambaye pia ni MCA eh, special elect Asanti. Tuko na Uticus eh, kutoka Kahawa UT. Tuko na Mofaya Karani Themedu kutoka Kayole 1 Kayole Central. Tuko na Kimondo kutoka Mukuru kwa Njenga. Asanti. Tuko na Cecilia ambaye ni coordinator wetu pia wa chama ya UDA na of course tuko na Dr. Pato ambaye ndio MCA wa hapa. Your Excellency pia tuko na oh, wapi? Sisi wanao ni kambi. Yes, former MCA Kambi yako hapo katikati karibu karibu sana thank you for coming. Of course Mark Tosha ametambuliwa former MCA wa hapa. Asante sana. Nani mwingine? Of course eh. Oh, mafirifiri yako hapa. <laughs> She's been a long serving councillor. Alafu akakuwa MCA wetu. Love of course pia tuko na MC yetu kutoka Dandora eh, tunamtanga ka, kadhundo lakini yako hapa pia karibu sana thank you for coming naona Kiprugu tako hapa ambaye ni board member kule Pumwani nimeona Edu ako hapa alikuwa chief agent wetu katika makadara he was your agent your excellency nani mwingine Asante of course tuko na Nyangi ni vice chair wa the Dika control board ya Nairobi Judith Asante sana haya tuko na former MP wa hapa Bena E, mutura Your Excellency Bena alikuwa mbunge wa hapa amekuwa speaker wetu 
na hii shamba Bernardo aliweza kufanya iwe allotted kwa hii kanisa we must recognize him atungeweza kujenga kanisa hii kama sio kazi ya Bena ambaye aliweza kufanya wakati amekuwa kiongozi asante sana uh, for the work that you have done for the people of course tuko na Anto uh, ambaye alikuwa candidate wetu wa hapa unajua sasa hizi alado anaenda vihiga kuwa governor na atashinda huko huyo najua atashinda tunamsupport kabisa mia kwa mia so sisi tuko na Anto na Anto na Bena watatuambia vile tuendelee because now makadara becomes ours asante sana tuko na matumaini mengi sana kwa viongozi wetu Of course tuko na deputy governor wa Nairobi Njoroge Mushiri. Thank you so much. Jana ilikuwa birthday yake. Tulimwimbia Happy birthday. Tukiwa alafu sasa Embakasi West. So mheshimiwa Ladwa Bena Asanteni because without you we would not have done that. Mheshimiwa George Theuri ambaye ni rafiki yako sana akaanzisha program ya Social Hall na MCA Mbatia ndo akaanzisha mambo ya complex. Of course ikakoma kwama from 2014 I came here as a nominated MP to that ground tukisema iendelee. I was very proud yesterday kuizindua kwa sababu imekamilika tumeka pesa we have football, netball, basketball yote iko hapo na vijana wetu watapata kitu ya kufanya. Tuwapigie makofi wa viongozi wetu. Um, the bishop thank you so much for today's word and the consecration of this church. Kwa washirika wa kanisa hii, Hongera, mmejitolea, mmejinyima na, na vile chama wetu wamesema wa strategic plan. When you take care of God's business, he takes care of your business. Na kwa ile kujitolea you have built God's house first before building your own houses. Hiyo ni jambo la busara sana. Tunawapongeza. Congratulations. We are proud of you for the work that you've been able to do for the Lord. Thank you so much for the preaching bishop. Umehubiri vizuri sana. Pali tu nilikuwa na wasiwasi kidogo tu. Unajua kuna mahali niliona alado wa kismile jo alisema maandamano ya kwanza ilikuwa palm sunday watu walibeba matawi wakiandamana at the triumphal entry na alado akaanza kusema sunaona hii mambo yetu ni ya biblia lakini hapana kwa hiyo maandamano yao hawakungoa reli hawakungoa kiti yoyote hawakugonga biashara ya mtu ile biashara tu yenye Yesu alikataa ni kufanya biashara kwa kanisa na akawatoa. And that's how you know to be a leader you don't have to be popular. Because Jesus didn't wait for consensus. He saw the wrong thing was being done. Akaambia watu watoke kwa kanisa. To stop turning God's house into a house of a den of thieves. Hakungoja consensus. Alisema mtoke. Na watu wakaweza kutoka. So Joji usitumie hiyo verse next time. Na najua kuna next time because mambo ya maandamano imeisha thanks to the wisdom of our president na ile kazi ambayo unafanya your excellency very quickly this makadara constituency is holds the history of our country this constituency is a reflection of the entire country kenya this is the first place where apartheid began in kenya in 1902 Uh, St Stephen's SK ambayo ndo kanisa one of the oldest churches which is an anglican church it used to be in parliament where parliament buildings is today that's where SK St Stephen's was lakini kwa sababu wazungu hawakutaka kuingiana na Waafrika because they had old saints cathedral which we still have today wakaambia waafrika watoke wakuje wajenge kanisa hapa na ndo ikakuwa St Stephen's that was at the first level of segregation as we moved ahead after the state of emergency excellency hakutaka maumau na wakikuyu wachanganyike na wajaluo na waluya waka separate along the road so this side of kaloleni makongeni and uh, this other side they made sure because they could not allow people from the mountain to join the trade unions they kept them in kimathi in bahati in huru on this side 
And on the other side, they kept the other communities. And that is how Tomboya emerged. Because Tomboya, ambaye alifanya kanjo, unajua Tomboya alikuwa kanjo kama sisi, alikuwa nasoma mita, he saw an opportunity to join the trade movement, and through that, he started collecting money in a leather pouch to pay Dennis Spirit. Dennis Spirit was a lawyer of the Kenyatta's. But because Wazungu akona kuna usalama, in 1952, November 24th, walimuwa kansela, ambaye alikuwa kansela wa hapa. Uyo kansela alikuwa naitua eh, Mbotela. Walimuwa, ili waseme ni maumau wameua Mbotela, so that we start fighting between the Kikuyus and the Luos. It didn't work. The same exact year, the anniversary of Mbotela's death, pali panaitua Obama, hii soko ya Obama, wakaua ofafa. Ndomana tukona ufafa Jericho, ufafa Maringo. Walipomua wali expect tena wambia wajaluo na, na waluya ya kuwama ni maumau wameua hao to start retaliating. Two peacemakers emerged and the Bible says blessed are the peacemakers. Tom Joseph Mboya and Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. They went round to Mboya Social, what we call to Mboya Social Hall. They went round Makongeni. They went round all these estates telling the Luos not to retaliate. Because it is not them who have killed, it is not the Kikuyus who have killed the Luos. Today, when you see how this constituency votes, many times, it reflects Nairobi and it reflects Kenya. I'm very happy because today, kama kuna mahali, hakuna ukabila. Kenya hii, ni Makadara constituency. In Makadara constituency, all communities live together in harmony. Because wamejua hapa, hakuna njaya ya mkikuyu, tafauti na ya muluya, hakuna potu ya wakamba, Hakuna kosefu ya maji, ya wakale, everyone is a Kenyan. The Republic of Kenya needs to emulate this constituency. Mchipikia ni makofi kabisa. <laughs> Number two, your excellency, um, and I've seen I have some of my officers, utakubali ya rakaraka tu ni watambue, because the things have been asked for ni yaandu watajibu. The chief officers and CECs wa Nairobi, ambao wako wapa, tafadhali very quickly, stand. I can see Musembi of Social Services, and uh, Zipora Njeri, there is in charge of business and hustler opportunities. Mkai Chile. What these people are asking for is truly their right to excellency. And I will talk just about two things. Number one, this estate was built over time by the city council of Nairobi. Much of it, bado ni yetu, wanatulipa rent. Wanatulipa rent, manyumba yiko wapa ya bahati, manyumba ya kimavi, manyumba ya jeri, manyumba ya makongeni, eh, a few of them there. Um, of course, most of that is railway, but uh, most of these houses in Izetu is a city council, na Jericho. We have embarked on a program of urban renewal, and uh, we are partnering with you, Excellency. Hapa Bahati took on 19.7 acres that we are redeveloping, na ni mzuri tuwaeleze. In those 19 acres, Your Excellency, took on a lot tatu. There's one lot of 6.3 acres, ambao itatua nyumba 3,488. There's another lot of another 6 acres, itatua nyumba elfu tatu. Na lot 3, ambao yikona watu wengi, it has 249 houses. Itatupatia manyumba elfu tatu. Yo program, tumekotu nafanya public participation, watu wamelezo, pole pole, that it is for our benefit. Because Nairobi must grow. Nairobi is changing. We must provide housing for other people. Tunaanza na lot 3 ambao tumeza kwa award e, mwishimi wa lado. Kwa hiyo lot 3 kuna watu 229. But in the entire Bahati Estates I have 417 families. Hizo familia ukiangalia vizuri. Utapata kuna mzee alikuwa alipata nyumba kapata hiyo kadi. Imenda kwa mtoto wake. Imenda kwa nephew. Imebaki tuko familia. It keeps being handed down different generations. I know in many of our programs we are doing a tenant purchase unalipa unalipa rent alafu nyumba inakuwa yako si ni kweli vile tumesema kama county na tumepitisha kwa cabinet ya Nairobi county eh joji na pato vitu vingine si usipatie mdosi kazi ndogo zingine ni za governor we mdosi yako na mambo mingi Kenya mzima wale wote wamekuwa kwa nyumba zetu with those allotments when we build the houses that house belongs to you what you've been paying from the 50s or the 60s is your mortgage. Imesha lipua. So hile nyuma mbao tunajenga, tunawapatia. Hakuna nyumba ya si ubure, mumelipia. Hizo miaka zote tayari, 
mumezali pia hizo manyumba so it is not a free house because i'll give you an example of excellency number 249 uh, lot 3 zinanipatia nyumba 1300 out of the 249 they're giving us 3000 houses those 3000 houses can house those 249 wa lot 3 can house wale wa lot 2 can house wale wa lot 1 kila mtu aingie hapo tujenge estate mzuri so sitakuwa ni ulafi sana nikitaka tena mwanze kulipia nyumba afresh the houses belong to the county government but the county government because of trust and because of the goodwill na watu wa Islands hizo nyumba tunawapatia all you will be paying for is service charge ili mali isafishwe service charge kama ya elfu ama ya 500 will agree all you will pay for is a service charge hiyo ni sawa ama mngependa mununue manyumba tena mwanze tena so that is what we are going to do your excellency we want to partner with you because wewe uko na housing fund sisi hatuna fund sisi zile tunajenga ni through ppp so we have a developer who's coming ambaye anajenga hizo kuna zile anauza kuna zile kama 600 in lot uh, 640 houses inakuja kwa county tutarentisha na kuna zile pia tunapatia wenyewe but once we clear these other lots please from your fund let us build these houses together Alisu tujenge lot 2 ama ta lot 1 we can build those houses before and I'm very grateful na ningependa watu wa Nairobi wasikize kulikuwa na restriction ya height ya manyumba sana sana karibu na airport hii silia base coming down this way niliomba rais tulipozindua manyumba za kiambio na pia manyumba za hapa eh, kamkunji that the reason those air base built zamani was to evacuate the president's area emergency akitoka state house kama kuna dignitary wakati emergency yapelekwa haraka haraka isili apandishwe ndege nikamwambia rais leo ukajaribu utakwama hapo kwa traffic that it can't work you know you cannot be evacuated through isili anymore so tutolee your restriction i'm very happy rais amesikia akakubali the height restriction has been removed we are going to go up even up until 25 floors kwa hizi manyumba tunajenga na watu wa Nairobi waelewe vizuri kwa nimesikia watu wakilalamika pande ya kileleshwa pande ya, ya Lovington ati manyumba yetu ilikuwa one story ilikuwa nyumba ndogo sasa apartment imekuja Nairobi is 696 square kilometers in 2050 Nairobi itakuwa na population ya 10.5 million people tutapanua Nairobi hapana the only place we have to go is up hiyo ndo ardhi tumebaki nayo hiyo ndo hewa tumebaki nayo the only thing we need to do and i'm glad we are working with you ni kuongeza mambo ya sewerage, mambo ya maji, mambo ya drainage ili zile nyumba ambazo tunajenga ziko na capacity ya kufanya siwa na kufanya pia maji ifike. Tumekuwa na shida ya maji Nairobi kwa muda mrefu sana. Nairobi receives 5 million 500 million liters to, per day 525. Na tunahitaji 870. Huyu rais wetu nataka tumshukuru sana. Tulishikana na vile tuliingia kwa ofisi nikamwambia tusaidie Northern Collector 1 ilikuwa imekwama akatusaidia tukalipa watu we lives northern collector one ambayo inatoka muranga inatuletea 140 million liters of water extra of what we have size your excellency imebaki 1.5 kilometers in six weeks it can be done if you help us push athi water to do it juzi nimekata eh, avast for kenya to give us permission to do an open cut they gave us um, ambayo ilikuwa imezuia kazi kufanywa valves imetoka nje in the next less than two months more water is coming to Nairobi. Wale wanapata maji mara mbili watapata sasa mara nne. Wale wanapata mara nne wanaweza pata wiki mzima and we move on. Ya pili ambayo umetufanyia excellency, nikimaliza mambo ya maji, ulitusaidia, I told you I found donors, you helped us align it with the treasury, tumepata 100 million dollars ya Nairobi County kufanya Northern Collector 2 na Maragua 4. Northern Collector 2 na Maragua 4 itatongezea 220 million liters of water in the next three years. Your Excellency if you support us in the next three years shida ya maji Nairobi itasomwa kwa vitabu ya historia and then moving forward let us plan the next million liters because Nairobi is growing and the future will not plan itself ya mwisho your excellency kwa sababu leo ni siku ya furaha and i'm really grateful and honored that kanisa imetambua ya kwamba the church is the salt of the earth and being the salt of the earth lazima kanisa iwe ndani ya maneno ya wananchi because you offer leadership That is why makanisa mengi ambayo yuko hapa played a, re, a strong part in the liberation including the Anglican Church. If you look at the former bishops Gitari and other bishops they played a part because the salt must be mixed in the food for you to eat it. Hawezi kula chakula alafu kule chumvi baadaye. So it's good for you to know the things 
of the world and the leadership that God has given us. Your Excellency, tumekuwa na shida ya madaktari. Na juzi, najua watu walisikia nikiambia madaktari wa Nairobi warudi kazini. Your Excellency, health is devolved. The national government has policy and four hospitals. Kenyatta Hospital, Spinal Injury Hospital, Madare Mental Hospital, and I think I'll do it. Or one more, five. The other hospitals are counties. Nairobi have more than 160 hospitals. Madaktari wa Nairobi niliwambia. Because they have, walikuwa na goma mambo ine. Sindio? Ya kwanza, wanataka interns. Wapeleke kwa hospitali. Kwambia interns, siyo kazi ya county ya Nairobi. Ule amekuandika kazi. Interns ni national government. Na wale wanafaa kugoma mambo ya interns ni madaktari wa Kenyatta. Hizo national siyo zitu. Number two, walikuwa na goma, wapata insurance. Madaktari wenu Nairobi County wanapata the best comprehensive insurance in this country, Your Excellency. We give them proper comprehensive insurance, each of them worth two billion every year for all my staff. Ya tatu walikuwa na goma ni mshara kuchelewa. Hapa kuna wafanyikazi wa Nairobi. In fact, kama kuna wafanyikazi wa Nairobi, akona deni yako, akona deni yake. Akona pesa yako. Na kuambia hajalipo anakudanganya. Wanaliponga on time. Wanalipo on time kila mwaka, kila mwezi. Asi kudanganya ati hajalipo bado. So the doctors of Nairobi, you get your insurance, your salary is on time. Why are you rioting or striking because of a different employer? I told them the people of Nairobi, juzi nilikuwa mamalusi hospital, usiku midnight. Then I went to Pumwani. I went to Mbagathi. At Mbagathi, a lady who had dilated could not be served by the locum uh, nurses who we had there. Wakapiga simu Kenyatta, akakataliwa. The family took her on Uber. I don't know if she survived. And I've asked them to find that lady. She, her life was at risk. Yet our doctors have no reason to be on strike in Nairobi. Your Excellency, what you're doing at the national level, tafadhali utuma wa kwa counties out to the employers. I will deal with mine in Nairobi. And I've told them, if you're interested in serving Nairobians, because how I mean you contract na watu Nairobi kwa patia huduma to make a madawa. Hospital yata hapa ikona madawa for the first time. We're hiring these people. We are paying them. If you're a doctor and you're interested in working in Nairobi, be in hospital. I told them that on Thursday, on Friday, I had 60% of them reporting back to work. They came back to work. Monday, ni mandika barua ya wale 40%, watu wambia kama wanataka kazi. Kama wataki, kuna wengi wanataka kazi ya kuwa daktari. Na utu wawandika. As you sort out the issues, if you want to be in solidarity with the National Union, you can be in solidarity without keeping the lives of Nairobians at risk. Na unalipo msahara, na ukona insurance, na wale ambao wa NMS tumawandika. So tafadhali madaktari wetu warudi, your excellency help us. That national forum is not even constitutional. Because you strike against your employer. The employers are the counties. Let them come. Na nimona aladu wapia ajakata. Na pato ajakata. Na bena alianza. Tutakapo anza hii mambo ya housing yetu. Na kuna mtu anabumolewa nyumba. There is no eviction. It is just a relocation. When the first blocks are done, na kuna nyumba yako unaingia. Tutakapofanya hivyo, hakuna kufunja eh, mafiriviri, hakuna kufunjia mtu nyumba. Once we do that and we have space, we will bring it to the cabinet of the county and I'm sure the county because rais wetu ametufunza umumu wa kanisa. Tutaweza kupatia nafasi, kuexpand kanisa yetu ili tupate pia space na parking hapo. Your Excellency, unakumbuka pia ndugu zako hapa juu eh, PCA eh, walikuomba na hii makadara mkona bahati sana. Yaani rais amekuja kanisa mara mbili. Kwa hii constituency moja, tayari, na kuna constituency 290. Pia walikuomba excellency, kuna mjengo inaendelea, national government that side, they also wanted some space, and I know uh, you, you had a good answer for them. Situko pamoja watu wangu wa bahati. Toyamwe? 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 pamoja na mnaio? Ama ni aje? Mungu wa bariki sana. Sasa next time, hatu tanguja mtuite mchango, junu, inakaa muitangi watu mchango. Tutakuja tu wenyewe, na tupeane support kwa ile kazi ambayo iko hapa. Kwa hayo mengi na najua ni mengi, Your Excellency. And thank you for being gracious enough to give us that time. Naomba tumkaribishe Rais wetu William Samoi Ruto aje atusalimie. Asante ni sana. Tafadhali tuketi. Baba wetu askofu Joel Waweru viongozi wote wa kanisa ndugu viongozi wenzangu wa Kristo wa hapa Emmanuel Bahati ya Mjambo 
Amjambo tena. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bas mimi kwanza nataka nimshukuru Mungu kwa kutupatia nafasi hii. Leo tufike hapa katika sherehe hii maalum ya kanisa yenu mpya. Na nichukue nafasi hii ni waeleze ya kwamba mmejenga kanisa mrembo sana. Pongezi. You have built a very beautiful church. Ikisemekana ya kwamba ilikuwa nyumba ya mabati kuamini itakuwa shida. Lakini nataka niwaambie pongezi sana wakati nilipata mwaliko wa kuja hapa. Nilifurahi sana kwa sababu nilijua kwa sababu nilisoma kidogo mwenye kuniandikia aliniambia aliniandikia safari yenu ya kufika hapa. Vile imeelezwa na ndugu yangu hapo bwana Njuguna na nikasema lazima nifike hapa niwe shahidi ya bidii yenu na imani yenu kwa Mungu mpaka mkajenga kanisa hii na mimi nasema pongezi tena um, mimi pia nataka niwashukuru wananchi wa sehemu hii nilikuja hapa na daktari Patrick na timu yetu ya UDA tukaomba kura zenu mkatupatia wacha niseme tena asante sana na vile mjumbe wenu amesema sasa sisi wote kama viongozi inatubidi tujumuike tushirikiane tufanye kazi ya wananchi wa taifa letu la Kenya tukiwa mirengo tofauti lakini kazi yetu ni moja ya kutumikia wananchi wa Kenya. Asante sana askofu kwa kutueleza neno la Mungu. Nimefurahi sana kwamba tuko na historia ndefu. Tumeshiriki pamoja na wewe katika makanisa mengi hapa Nairobi. Na nashukuru pia umenikumbusha kanisa ya Kayole. Na nakumbuka hiyo eh, wakati tulikuwa kayole pamoja na wewe na sasa umesema unaenda kustaafu na ile kanisa bado haijakamilika mimi nataka nikueleze askofu ya kwamba kama itabidi tu postpone <laughs> eh, siku yako ya retirement mpaka hiyo kanisa ikamilike lakini kwa sababu hatuna uwezo ya kupostpone ile retirement nimeenda katika eh, consecration ya maskofu ya SK inasemwa mpaka tarehe mpaka saa mpaka siku ndio mtu asikuja akakwama kwa ofisi so because we cannot postpone that one then we will have to accelerate the completion of the church kwa hivyo na kuomba askofu uh, wale wanaosimamia kanisa hiyo kule Kayole wakuja wanione kesho alafu tukamilishe hiyo kanisa. Uh, na tutafanya bidii. Sijui unastaafu mwezi gani bisho. Ah bas. 29 September tuko na muda tutamalisha hiyo kanisa. So uh, ili tuharakishe uh, utumane wale watu wanashiriki pale kama inawezekana kama uko na nafasi unaweza kuja na wao ndio tupange vile tutakamilisha hiyo kanisa kwa sababu um, ni jambo nzuri when we uh, serve the church and when we serve God kwa hivyo tutashirikiana hivyo na kabla uja staafu tutaenda pale tuweze kufungua hiyo kanisa pamoja to the glory of God ningependa pia eh, kusema kwa watu wa hapa ni kweli mumeamua kujenga nyumba ya Mungu kabla ya manyumba zenu na kwa sababu ya imani yenu nimeambiwa ya kwamba Reverend Manga aliwaambia mkijenga neno kanisa la Mungu 
Mungu atawasaidia manyumba zenu zitajengwa. So, if it was a prophecy. Mimi na huyu eh, governor wetu tumekuja kuwaambia hiyo prophecy ya kwamba manyumba zenu zitajengwa hapa bahati vile mmejenga kanisa la Mungu. We want to confirm that that prophecy is going to happen. Um, vile mnajua tuko na mpango mkubwa wa ujenzi wa manyumba katika taifa letu la Kenya. Na malengo yetu katika ujenzi wa manyumba ni mambo manne ya muhimu. Ya kwanza ni nafasi yetu ya kupanga ajira ya vijana wa Kenya. Nikiongea na nyinyi saa hizi tuko na vijana 1140 ambao wanafanya kazi katika program ya housing mahali pote tunazochenga hizi manyumba ikiwemo hapa Nairobi ukienda pale mkuru ukienda kibra na sasa tutaanzisha ya bahati utakuta tuko na vijana maelfu wako kazini pale mkuru tunajenga nyumba elfu kumi na tano ni mahali ambapo pako chini sana. Hata watu wengi walikuwa wananiuliza hizi manyumba inatoshana na kileleshwa na kule Lavington. Lakini tulikubaliana ya kwamba safari hii Mungu ametueleza ya kwamba tuinue wale wako chini. Ndio tukasema bottom up. Sasa hiyo bottom up iko mkuru tutaileta hapa bahati. Tumesha kubaliana na governor atajenga loti ya kwanza. Na mimi nitajenga loti ya pili na ya tatu. Tayari nimeambia wizara yetu kiongozwa na Halis Wahome tuanze ushirikiano na county government. Mimi nataka nirudi hapa kabla ya mwisho wa mwaka huu kuja kuanzisha nyumba hizo karibu elfu nane za bahati hapa kwenu na vile mumeelezwa hakuna mtu atatolewa kwa nyumba yake kwa nguvu there will be no eviction kila mwananchi tutakupatia mahali ya kuishi ukingojea nyumba ijengwe hiyo ni kazi yetu tutakupatia pesa ya miaka miwili kae mahali lipe rent kidogo tukimaliza nyumba unarudi kwa nyumba yako na kazi inaendelea mbele hapa vile mmeambiwa kwa wale watu karibu mia ine wanaishi hapa tutaweza kujenga nyumba hapa karibu elfu kumi actually elfu kumi na mbili tunaweza kujenga hapa kwa hivyo tutaweza kuhakikisha kwamba wale mia ine wanaishi hapa wanarudi kwa manyumba yao na vile vile wa Kenya wengine wengi ambao saa hizi hawana mahali ya kuishi wanaishi mahali e, vitongoji wanaishi mahali hakuna sewage hakuna maji hakuna stima hakuna barabara wanaishi mahali inaitwa slums so tunataka kuhakikisha kwamba wale wanaishi katika sehemu zile tuwaondoe pale tuwaweke katika manyumba mazuri ya estate na tuweze kusonga mbele zote kama wa Kenya jambo la pili ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba in town yetu city ya Nairobi inapangwa vizuri hapa mkiona hapa kanisani wall iko hapa wall iko hapa vile governor amewaambia tukipanga sasa kujenga manyumba hapa mtapata mahali ya kutosha ya kanisa hii yenu mtengeneze parking tengeneze sehemu zingine and we can have a properly planned city na hapa Nairobi mpango yetu ni kuhakikisha kwamba by the end of this year tuko na nyumba elfu wa msini ambazo zinajengwa in Nairobi alone So mheshimiwa Ladwa na timu yako ya hapa tushirikiane hata wale watu wa makongeni nishaketi chini na wao 
na tumekubaliana mpango na taratibu ya sawa sawa kuhakikisha ya kwamba hii mak, e, makadara kwanza makadara hii ndio target yetu kubwa kwa sababu hapa ndio tuko na ardhi ya kutosha so hapa makadara before the end of the year we will have started the construction of minimum 30000 houses in makadara alone <laughs> na ni kwa sababu tunataka kuinua wa Kenya wa chini wale wanalipa rent tunataka sasa walipe mortgage pole pole badala ya kulipa miaka ishirini alafu nyumba bado ni ya county ama ni ya mtu amekuwa amekupatia hiyo nyumba inakuwa yako na unaanza kuishi as an owner my commitment is that in the next five years we should have a million new home owners in Kenya so that we can begin to dignify the people of Kenya by making sure that we organize them and we organize their livelihoods and their living conditions so that everybody lives in dignity vile vile sehemu hii yetu ya Islands tumekubaliana mambo yenu ya masoko iko katika mpango yetu we gave a commitment we are going to build 20 new markets in Nairobi tukishirikiana na county government and we are well on course ya kazi hiyo vile vile tukiwa hapa nimesikia vile Patrick MCA wenu wamesema kwamba hamuna shule ya upili na ndio sababu nilisema hapa Nairobi being our capital city na tuko na shida kubwa ya watoto wa Nairobi kusoma it is a very big concern to me as a parent kwamba tuko na watoto wengi hawana mali ya kusoma na ndio nilisema already and aladwa you know this nimetoa pesa bilioni moja ya kujenga additional classrooms for kids of Nairobi county <laughs> na hiyo itajenga madarasa elfu moja mpya ya watoto wa Nairobi nitaweka tena katika budget mwaka ujao another 1 billion for another 1000 classrooms because i made a commitment in the next three years lazima tujenge madarasa mengine mapya elfu tatu na mia tano outside pesa ya CDF ambayo wabunge hao wanapatiwa so including CDF we should be able to build more classrooms and accommodate all the children of Nairobi city tunafanya hivyo Kenya mzima lakini Nairobi is special kwa sababu Nairobi bado iko na watoto wengi hawaendi shule just imagine kwa hivyo uh, by June this year Aladwa tell your colleagues by June this year you must have built the 1000 classrooms so that next year we do the same and among us the school sasa huyu Patrick amesema please kwa sababu wewe Aladwa uko na nafasi ya kujenga madarasa karibu 40 or uh, i don't know how many maybe uh, yeah about 40 in this uh, out of the 1000 you know so you have an opportunity to build so ongeza kwa hiyo madarasa ya huyu mungwana hiyo unasema inaitwa nini pale Morrison lakini mbali na ile aladwa atakujengea kama atakujengea madarasa mawili nitakuongezea wewe Patrick milioni kumi ndio tujenge madarasa mengine kumi zaidi na nitatumana next week waziri atakuja pale umuonyeshe mahali itajengwa hizo madarasa so that so that tuwe na secondary school ya watu wa hapa bahati ndio vijana wa hapa wapate nafasi ya kazi hiyo mimi nataka niwaeleze wazazi as parents we must be concerned about our children lazima tushughulike na masomo na hali ya watoto wetu kwa sababu tusiposhughulika na hiyo kazi tutakuwa tunamkosea hata Mungu because hawa watoto tumepatiwa ni baraka tumepatiwa na Mungu 
and we must look after them. So, hiyo shule ya Morrison umesema tatumana next week we are going to build a whole new uh, secondary school there. And I will come to Yobijana wa hapa na tuangalie vile tutashirikiana kwa pamoja. Mwisho yale mambo mengine mengi ya Nairobi hapa nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba wakati tunapanga mambo ya barabara, mambo ya stima, mambo ya maji, panga ajira ya vijana wenu we keep Nairobi in focus. Tunahakikisha kwamba iko Nairobi iko katikati. Nasumbuka na huyu governor wenu saa zingine hata jana nimeongea na yeye mara tatu kwa mambo ya Nairobi. Si nivyo governor? Nikimwambia iko shida hapa, panga hapa, iko shida pale, panga pale kwa sababu we want to make our city the face of our country. Mimi vile vile nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba tutashirikiana tutafanya hiyo kazi kwa pamoja na mpango yetu inaambatana na mambo ya Biblia. Watu wengi hawaelewi ni nini kwa sababu gani tunapanga vile tunapanga. Na nataka nichukue nafasi hii ni waulize wakulima wetu. Ya kwamba sasa msimu wa upanzi inaanza mwezi huu. Nataka niwaeleze hakuna wasiwasi ya mambo ya mbolea. Tayari katika stores zetu sehemu mbalimbali mbali, tunapeleka eh, sehemu ambayo inahitajika. Tuko na magunia milioni tano ya mbolea ambayo tayari tumenunua kama serikali na wakulima watapata. Niwashukuru wakulima mwaka uliopita walituzalishia chakula ndio gharama ya chakula imeenda chini. Mwaka huu tena tunaongeza times two ile tulifanya mwaka uliopita. Kwa sababu ukisoma matayo na bishop wewe ni rafiki yangu. Mimi nafuata maneno ya Biblia sana. Matayo 25 Nataka muandike yule mwenye anajua kuandika. Matayo 25 Ukurasa wa 31 usome mpaka mwisho nafikiri 46. Inazungumzia judgment day kwamba kuna siku kila mmoja wetu watasimama mbele ya Mungu. Mimi na wewe na tutakuwa na maswali tutaulizwa pale tukisimama mbele ya Mungu so usome vizuri alafu ujue utachangia namna gani otherwise utakuwa upande ya left ya watu wa kwenda jehanam ama utakuwa upande ya right ya watu wa kwenda mbinguni mwende musome mpango yetu ya kuzalisha chakula katika taifa letu la Kenya ni tuhakikishe vile neno la Mungu inatuambia tupate chakula tuweze kila mkenya aweze kulisha familia yake mpango yetu kwa matibabu na mumesikia vile tume e, tumepanga tumepitisha sheria zote tumepitisha regulation zote sasa tutakuwa na mfumo mpya saa hizi wizara itatoa mwongozo vile kila mmoja wetu atasajiliwa katika mpango mpya wa matibabu ndio wale ambao hawana uwezo kabisa wa kulipia chochote pale hospitalini sisi kama taif, eh, serikali ya Kenya tuwalipie na tuhakikisha kwamba wako na bima kama wa Kenya wengine wale wanalipa kiwango cha juu tuwapunguzie kama hawana uwezo wale mshahara kubwa kama mimi na Sakaja na hawa wadosi tulipe zaidi ili tuweze kupeleka Kenya yetu mbele that is the commitment we have vile vile ni kupanga ajira ya vijana wetu na wakati tunapanga ajira ya vijana wetu tuko na mipango karibu manne ambayo tunapanga ajira ya hawa vijana housing export of labor digital jobs and other interventions that we are making including our special economic zones and also our county aggregation and industrial parks so that we can create opportunities for young people to work 
in Kenya and contribute their energy, their talent, their expertise in driving the economy of our country. Haya mipango yote ni kwa sababu tunataka tukisimama mbele ya Mungu tuweze kusema we did something to make sure that nobody slept hungry. We did something to make sure that those who were sick got at attention. We did something to make sure that our young people had something to do. We did something to make sure that people have water to drink. It is in the plan of God. So, Bishop amenisaidia kuniambia ya kwamba jameni msinite majina mara sakayo mara nani. <laughs> Lakini unajua askofu mimi kama msomi wa Biblia ukisoma katika Wakorinto wa kwanza mstari wa tisa no mstari wa Wakorinto wa kwanza tisa pale katika msha, eh, mstari wa nafikiri eh, 19 inasema I became a Jew so that the Jews could come along I became everything for Christ's sake. And I want to tell you I have no problem being called whatever name so long as I achieve a better destiny for our country. <laughs> And more importantly, kama Nehemiah angesikia Sanballat na Tobias ukuta wa Jerusalem ingejengwa kwa sababu kuna kuna Tobias wengi wanasema hata hii mpango ya housing haina maana hata hii mpango ya kuzalisha chakula haina maana na sisemi ati aladwa ni Sanballat hapana <laughs> nasema tu kuna wengine so katika hii harakati ya kujenga tutakuwa na watu wengi ambao wana hawaoni mahali tunaenda lakini baadaye watakuja kuelewa where we are going. Si ndio? So we have I have absolutely no issue with whatever is being said left right and center. My focus is to make sure that we change our country. And I am very clear my brother bishop in my mind. Mungu hajanijalia niwe rais wa Kenya ati kujaza nafasi ya mtu kuitwa rais ama ati ndio nipate mshahara nipate kazi hapana Mungu amenipatia hii nafasi nibadilishe Kenya and I intend to do it and I know it is not going to be easy but by God's grace we are going to change this country for the better tutahakikisha kwamba kuna chakula ya kutosha tufukuze njaa hawa vijana wetu wengi wanaangaika wana ajira tutapanga mpaka wawe na ajira hawa watu wanaishi katika slums it is our duty responsibility kwamba na wao they live in dignity and that is our mission it is not going to be easy i know that very clear but i intend to be focused until we achieve it for the sake of our country the same way paul said I became everything for the sake of the gospel of Christ. I don't mind being anything for the sake of the destiny of our country. Lazima tuungane, tushirikiane, tufanye kazi hiyo ndio nchi yetu ya Kenya iweze kusonga mbele. Mimi nataka niwashukuru sana na waomba vile askofu amesema mtuombe sisi wote kazi hiyo ya kuongoza watu wengi sio kazi rahisi lakini Mungu atatupatia neema ya kuhakikisha kwamba tunatimiza mapenzi ya Mungu katika taifa letu la Kenya because that is what it is. So asanteni sana. Eh, ule bwana Njuguna amesema nyinyi sio watu wa eh, kuitana. Ati kujeni tusaidia hapa jenga namna hii. Nyinyi mnafanya kazi yenu mkimaliza mnatuita tunakuja tuna tunawapigia makofi. 
So bwana Njuguna hata na hivyo kwa sababu nyinyi sio watu wa kuitana lakini sisi ta zingine ni watu wa kujituma. <laughs> so hiyo eh, mjengo uko nayo hapo nyuma. Utaniona hapo kando. Nitakusaidia milioni tatu uendelee na hiyo mjengo. Ndio. <clears throat> na mkimalizia mtatuita tena. Ndio. Na mkimusimki kwama njiani mtuite. Sisi ni marafiki na tukuji hapa kwa sababu sisi si ni viongozi tunakuja hapa kwa sababu sisi ni wakristo na tunakuja kushirikiana pamoja na nyinyi So watu wa bahati tunawapenda sana tunawatakia heri na mimi najua ya kwamba kwa maombi yenu ushirikiano wenu na umoja wetu sote kama watu wa Kenya tutafaulu na um, natarajia sana ama natamani sana e, tukamilishe kanisa ile ya Kayole ndio askofu wetu aweze kustaafu na heshima so asanteni and god bless you naomba sasa tubaki tumesimama ili tumalizie kwa maombi benediction